Good morning. I'm Mike Weaver, and my friend Jimmy is on vacation this week, so I'm sitting in for him. Some of you may know that for a very long time now, it's been my habit to read a different book of the Bible each month. And this month, I am back to the book of Genesis again. But I'm rediscovering that this ancient book has an important message for these modern times. I'm rediscovering that there is order when those of us who love God do as he intended, and there's chaos when we do not. You'll remember that after God had created everything, heaven and the natural world, God said, in Genesis starting at verse 26, let us make humankind in our image like as to us, and let us give to them responsibility to tend and nurture all that is. So right there, what does the first chapter of Genesis tell us? It tells us that we, that you and I and all humankind, that we are created in the image of God. And it tells us that God has given us the honor of the task to care for all that he has created. Our Jesus understood this perfectly. And he demonstrated his understanding in an amazing incident that's recorded in Luke chapter 20. The religious establishment was so irritated with the being good and the doing good of this radical from Nazareth. And so one day they decide they're going to use their wits to trap and embarrass Jesus in public. So, taking a knife to a gunfight, these religious folks catch Jesus in front of a crowd and they say, Jesus, um, should we pay taxes to Caesar? Jesus says, um, do you have a coin? Uh, whose image is on it? They say, Caesar's image. And Jesus responds, what has Caesar's image on it belongs to Caesar. But what has God's image belongs to God. Well, what has God's image on it? Everything. Everything that God created, the natural world, and all humanity. A man who made this understanding a cornerstone in his life is a fellow by the name of Maltby Davenport Babcock. And every time I think of Maltby Babcock, I think of my good friend Jimmy Doan, because his contemporaries tell us that Babcock was, like Jimmy, unusually tall. And like Jimmy, he was handsome, and like Jimmy, he was athletic, and like Jimmy, he was a huge fan of the Orange Men of Syracuse University. In fact, Maltby Babcock was a student there. He was a scholar, in fact, and an outstanding baseball player. In 1878, on the first day of a new year of school, Babcock was on his way to his dorm room when he passed an open door and he looked in and in that room there was a large freshman beating a smaller student. Babcock entered the room. He grabbed the bully by the front of the neck and by the seat of the pants and threw him out an open window. After reassuring the beaten student, Babcock went outside, where he found the bully on the ground, dazed but conscious. Eyewitnesses say that Babcock knelt down by the bully, 
and with a huge smile said simply, we don't do that here. Maltby Davenport Babcock became a famous preacher and a poet. And in fact, you may know one of his poems. This is my father's world. And to my listening ears all nature sings. And round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. All nature and all humankind bear the imprint, bear the fingerprints of our Creator God. Now, I would never want you to throw someone out a window. But for the sake of the honor of God, I hope that you and I would be prepared to give our witness for the sake of the image of God in our world. I actually saw that being lived out recently. A few weeks ago, I was watching the nightly news and the coverage of the civil demonstrations following the death of George Floyd. And a TV news reporter came up on a mom and dad and children peacefully participating in a demonstration. The children were holding a little sign. It said, no, K-N-O-W, no justice, no, K-N-O-W, no peace. And the reporter asked them a few questions, eventually said, well, um, who are you here with? What, what group are you a part of? And they said, no one. And uh, he asked a few more questions. Then he said, well, I hope you don't mind me asking, but are you Democrats or are you Republicans? And the mother answered, we're Christians. Later in his poem, Babcock says, This is my father's world. Let me never forget that though the wrong seems often so strong, God is the ruler yet. My friends, in these complex days, it's good to know that whether the struggle around us is racial or ecological or political, it's good to know that in these hard times, those of us who love God have a witness to share. It humble and honest to speak sharply to the persistent evil that is at work in our present culture. For me, that testimony is simple, and it goes something like this. We are Christians. This is our Father's world. We don't do that here. Pray with me. Father God, make of us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us bring love. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. For the sake of our Lord Christ, amen. I hope you have a wonderful day.